What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to your show. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, Tuesday edition. We are fully in the second half of this NHL season, and that means it's time to take a look at some big-time sleepers, guys that might be under the radar in the first half that could put your team over the top in the second half. And you know we got these big-time bets ready to roll out for this 10-game board. Let's get this money. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You heard the music and you know what time it is. It's time for your source for fantasy hockey news. It's a Locked On Fantasy Hockey podcast, joined as always by my esteemed co host Mr. Steel Roden, it's your boy Big Flip Livingstone. We're holding it down Monday through Friday for all of you fantasy fanatics and degenerate gamblers out there. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Make sure you continue to drop those comments and hit us with the feedback, reviews, and everything you hear on today's episode. Let us know if you're feeling it. That's how we get better, and that's how, Steel, we continue to focus on all the top stories Coming out of the world of fantasy hockey, you and I got our fingers on the pulse. <laughs> and speaking of which, before we even get to big time bets, because I'm excited for this juicy 10 game Tuesday board, we need to take a look at some sleepers here, pal. You and I haven't done a lot of sleeper talk. It's a very trendy, you know, catchy topic to throw out there. But more realistically, this is an opportunity for you to go in the trenches, do a bit of research, take a look at some guys that some other GMs might be fading might not believe in guys that might even be out there on the waiver wire steel that can put you over the top in the second half. These lists, I love hearing what you have to say. Do we have some same players? We don't know. Who are you looking at in this second half for this fantasy sleeper conversation? I got a couple of goalies. I got a D men or two, and I got a forward hit me with some of your list. I'm excited for this conversation today. Yeah, same here. And, you know, that's exactly what I've had to do the last couple of weeks. I've got four guys on the IR and two mm. guys day-to-day with injuries right there now. So my team has been riddled with injuries uh, the past little while. So I've had to dig deep down the rabbit hole and find some guys at the bottom of the barrel. And, mm. you know, I'm, I might be contradicting a couple of my takes from a few weeks ago, but that's you know, hey, it happens. I've got injuries right now. I've got holes to fill. And I'm scramble. starting off with... I'm starting off with a team that I've told you to stay away from, the Anaheim Uh Ducks and Mason McTavish. Mason McTavish is now on the top line, centering, uh, you know, Adam Henrique and Troy Terry. He's rostered between 11 and 22% on ESPN and Yahoo Fantasy League. And he's been great so far. He's got six points his last three games. Again, I'm not telling you to pick him up and keep him on your team for the extended period of time. Now and again, go look at him. See how he's playing and pick him up and – you know, we're talking sleepers here. Sleeper picks right now. 26 points in 41 games on the season. Like mm-hmm. I said, six points in his past three games. 10 power play points. So he's getting some power play time as well. Again, it's funny that I'm talking about the worst team or second worst team in goals for. But, you know, <laughs> at times when you've got so many injuries, you got to dig deep down the rabbit hole and look at a guy like Mason McTavish who's centering that top line. And second half, man, things are going to get grisly. They're going to get a little ugly. you got to dig in the trenches. And why not dig in the trenches with a top five overall draft pick? A guy who's got it done at every level of his minor career. And in his first real run out with the Ducks, yeah, yeah. he had his 10-game stint last season, which, you know, he had a couple of highlight goals looking like the real deal. If he's already getting it done that, that you know to that level steal so far in this first half, He is the definition to me of a second half sleeper. And you mentioned it, people. Please hit us in the DMs and the comments. We always want to hear the takes. But remember, these are sleepers. These are guys. The guy I'm looking at, Gustav Forsling. He's only owned at 54% in ESPN leagues. He could be that defensive bump for you down the stretch. I'm trying to look at a few different positions here for you, Steele, and say what you will about the Florida Panthers, who are starting to turn it around a little bit. If you haven't noticed, they're starting to creep up that standing a little bit. Gustav Forsling is in a very good situation. You know I like to talk about what's going on around these players because it's not just them that feed their fantasy value. He's playing with Aaron Ekblad. What else do you want to hear? Oh, he's playing on a second power play unit. The Florida Panthers score a ton of goals ton a lot of goals Forsling Verhage Lundell Bennett 
I don't hate that second unit. And Forsling is out there in a lot of formats still. You and I talked about this player as maybe a sneaky under-the-radar yeah. target for the whole season. I think his second half, he's going to come on strong. He's getting good minutes. 24 ice time minutes per night. I like this guy. Little under-the-radar sleeper. My first guy on my list. I'm really happy you're highlighting some defensemen goalies because I've got five straight forwards right now. Perfect. I'm going all offense right now. Perfect. But Who I else really you got? like I really like Gustav Forsling. I talked about him in the preseason. I drafted mm -hmm. him on my fantasy team. I knew he was going to have a way better season than last year and get more ice time. So thank you for uh, highlighting Gustav Forsling. The next guy, again, I'm contradicting myself, but my team is riddled with injuries, so I got to go down this rabbit hole. Yeah, man. Max Domi of the Chicago Blackhawks. Hey, it's uh, not going to be pretty. It's, not, it's definitely not going to be pretty, but he's rostered right now between 14 and 22% currently. Top, again, top line center for the Chicago Blackhawks, mm. 28 points and 39 points. He clearly loves playing for Chicago, and Chicago clearly loves him playing for them as well in the organization. So I could see him remaining with the team for many, many years. 28 points in 39 games, 13 power play points, four points in his mm. last three games. But what really stands out to me about Max Domi's he's getting the most ice time he's ever had in his career. He's up to 18 and a half minutes Good on point. average this entire season. Again, I'm talking about two teams that are the worst in goals for this season, mm. but you're still getting, you're looking at the top production guys on their team right now. Yeah. Max Domi being one of them, along with Patrick Kane, who is one of the guys day to day on my fantasy team. So I like Max Domi right now. He's producing the Chicago Blackhawks. have actually really played. I played well the last five games. Alex Agreed. Stalock as well in the crease. Agreed. So, Max Domi, Alex Daylock, a couple guys in the Chicago Blackhawks that are a little bit sleepers the second half. Under the radar, Cats, and to me, Steele, where Max Domi's value stays tied is if he's able to continue to play with Patrick Kane. We know Patrick Kane's been yeah. injured. We know he's had maybe not a Patrick Kane-esque year, and maybe those injuries have played a factor. If Patrick Kane does get dealt away from Chicago, I would probably be bailing on Max Domi unless you're in very deep formats. But for now... You need that shot in the arm of offense. And hey, Steele and I are looking at, at these angles from different perspectives after the break. Actually, you know what, Steele? I can fit in another guy before the break. How about <laughs> that? We're going to get to big time bets. I got two goalies and I got another D-man. Actually, that's a lie. I got two goalies and I got two forwards. But I think you're going to like my next guy. Taking a look at the list of the top fantasy rated players in the league. Say what you will about Yahoo's rankings. Say what you will about ESPN's rankings. They're at least putting the guys who are on decent runs right now, putting up points. And when I look at a guy like Braden Shen, six points in his last four games steal, getting some more ice time. I don't hate Braden Shen to be a successful piece in this second half. 10 goals, 23 assists so far, 75 shots, 25 penalty minutes as well. He plus minus is not pretty at minus 15, <laughs> but no one on that St. Louis Blues team yeah, has a good plus minus number. You and I have talked about that at length. <laughs> but I don't know, Steele. This just seems like a veteran player that I don't mind taking a shot on. Like you said, we're not saying drop a, a keeper or anything like that. We're saying take a look at some of these guys that if you need a roster fill in, sleeper under the radar Braden Shen to me fits the bill steal this guy has been consistent in his career and he's not going anywhere in St. Louis they're selling pieces but Braden Shen is staying put in my opinion 31 years old he can still bring it and like I said three goals three assists in his last four games I'd say take a little look at Braden Shen as a sleeper under the radar second half candidate for sure I've also got a St. Louis Blues forward uh, as a second half sleeper right now I'll get to him after we talk about bet online thank you my friend thank you for teeing that up very nicely for me we got more sleepers and we got big time bets but today's episode is brought to you by bet online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis this season and every season get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to the end of the college bowl season go frogs to the basketball, hardcore, and everything in between. They have you covered for you at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, just like you like the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, you can find even more of those at BetOnline as well, where they're always the fastest and easiest way for you to get all of your betting lines and info, just like Steele and I do every single night for the NHL board. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts.
Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you go hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. You even go follow us on TikTok now at oh. LOFH Podcast. Uh, posting some YouTube shorts on there as well. Make sure you go follow us on all of our social media. Follow us on Twitter as well. Like Flip said, off the top. Leave some comments on the YouTube channel. DM us on Twitter. We love hearing all of your takes and opinions. And, you know, if you disagree or agree with us, we love to hear that as well. So make sure you go follow, subscribe. We love and appreciate all the support out there. I'll get to that St. Louis Blues uh, player a little bit down in this episode, but I want to talk about a guy that I know is – Near and dear Uh-oh. to Uh-oh. your heart, Uh-oh. Seth Jarvis of the Carolina Hurricanes. Yes, dear. Look, Carolina yes. has had to juggle some of their lines around because of mm-hmm. the return of Max Pacioretty. The mm-hmm. dozen bodies back in the lineup. And Seth Jarvis now finds himself on that top line with Sebastian Aho and Max Pacioretty. Now, I don't know how long he'll remain there. But if he's playing alongside Max Pacioretty and Sebastian Aho, I can see his offensive production start to trend up a little bit north, start heading mm-hmm. in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that, you know, Max Pacioretty's only played two games. He's got a couple of goals and assists as well. So he's got firing. Jarvis is only owned at seven, between seven and 26% right now on Yahoo and ESPN leagues. He's got 20 points in his, pa- he's got 20 points in 40 games this season. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I really do think playing alongside Ahu and Patch Reddy on that top line will kind of kickstart and create that spark that yes. he needs for the offense. Yes. Uh, he's also on the second power play unit with Tara Vine and Patch Reddy, Aho mm. and Pesci. I love that second power play unit for Me the too. Carolina Hurricanes. I know you love Seth Jarvis and, you know, a, lo- a lot of those other young guys. So Seth Jarvis, go take a little look at him and maybe yeah, pick him up off the waiver wire and see how well you can do. If he doesn't do well, you can always just drop him again. This guy's a little dynamo. Five foot ten, you know, 13th overall <laughs> draft pick steal. Six goals, 14 assists this season. Am I disappointed? Yes, because of how much I talked up this player and yeah. how good he looked in his first showing in the NHL last season, putting up 40 points in 68 games played at 20 years old still. 20 years old. And what tells me the most about what the quality is with this player is still, he's still getting the run out on that top line, even though he only has 20 points in 40 games. Perfect guy to target for a sleeper pick in the second half. I don't even need to talk about him anymore because you know he was on this list for me, Steele. But more seriously, guys, you know I go off at the hip sometimes and I say some things out loud and bop, bop, bop. <laughs> Seth Jarvis can play the game of hockey and he's per- performed and proved it already in his young career. And if you don't believe me, believe Rob Brindamore, a guy who has a long-standing NHL career and is respected around the league. He's still throwing him out there on that top line regardless of this quote-unquote slow start. Seth Jarvis... Big time target for the second half. Now, if you don't mind, Steele, I alluded to a couple of goaltenders, and I'm going to talk about them back to back. I was going to split it up, but let's keep it together. The first goalie I'm looking at only owned in 40% of ESPN leagues, and say what you will about the defense in front of him in Edmonton, Stuart (laughs) Skinner is going to have some good opportunities to put up some wins. I don't know about shutouts. I don't know about goals against or save percentage. But if you're looking at a goalie in the second half, the Edmonton Oilers also usually come on strong in the second half, right in the lead up to the playoffs. Stuart Skinner is a guy who is a beautiful fill-in for you right now. He would be my first fill-in option steal for a guy who you know, he's also been pretty good over his last five games. Yes, he's 2-2-1. Two, two, and one, But 2-2-1 two, two, and one against some good teams, Calgary, Colorado, even Seattle. Good performances, not so good. This goaltender can get it done at the NHL level. And I think with a little bit of a bump in play from the Edmonton Oilers, who I expect to be active at the deadline, Stuart Skinner is the prototypical sleeper under the radar ad in the second half if you need a little bolstering in that blue paint. Well, I don't know who your second goalie is, but take a look at Martin Jones as well. 18-5-1 and one hey, on now. the season. Yep. He's got those wins, but the goals against average and save percentage is just not quite there. So yeah. I agree with you on that take. I think that the wins will come for Stuart Skinner, but you just don't know what the overall stats will be mm. at the end of the day. But wins are wins. You need those wins to make the playoffs in the postseason. Yeah. And that's all that matters at the end of the day, as long as you're winning those games. I'm going to go back to the St. Louis Blues, though. Brandon, uh, yeah, Brandon Saad. Uh, you talked oh, about okay. Brandon Shen. Brandon, Brandon Sod has been right there along with him, rostered at 6% right now on both ESPN and, and Yahoo Fantasy Leagues. 
He has 18 points on the season right now, and seven of those points have come in the last four games. He has been on fire since the absence of O'Reilly and Tarasenko. Mm. He's, he, you know, sh- both Shen and Saad were called out by GM Doug they were. Armstrong. Yep. And ever since being called out, they both have taken off like a lightning bolt for the mm-hmm. St. Louis Blues. Again, I really like uh, Brandon Saad as well. He's on the second power play unit. He's on the second penalty kill unit. He does get some shorthanded opportunities. He's getting upwards of 17 and a half minutes now on average since the absence of O'Reilly and Tarasenko. Take Brandon Saad. We know our good buddy and uh, our good buddy, uh, Michael Amato, uh, uh, you know, made a comment the other day about how, you know, the times that he has picked Saad, he does nothing Mm. for him. And now that he hasn't picked him, Saad's taken off like a lightning bolt. So go look at uh, Saad and the St. Louis Blues. And I think that's a little interesting caveat as well that we remember, Steele. Yes, Tarasenko and Ryan O'Reilly are out. So it's like, how are you going to peg Shen and Saad as second half sleepers when maybe their minutes are going to get eaten too big time? If Vlad- Vladimir Tarasenko and Ryan O'Reilly get healthy earlier, they're going to be traded, in my opinion. Definitely yeah. O'Reilly. One of those pieces is going to move, and that's going to leave even more opportunity for Shen and Saad. So I say continue to keep your eyes hovered on this team in general. And again, Steele. So, Stuart Skinner would be my first guy I'm looking at for a sleeper, second half, good second half kind of pick. And number two, I got to talk about these Minnesota Wild a little bit more because the more that I read into this situation Hola. with Mark Andre Fleury, and maybe we can talk about the quality of the team in front of Philip Gustafson if he does get the run out in this second half. Compared to the Edmonton Oilers, those peripheral stats for you with Philip Gustafson are going to be a lot tighter with the defense that the Minnesota Wild employ. So I'm talking about taking a shot on Philip Gustafson, a guy who is 9-6-1 and one this season with a shutout, 2.25 goals against, and a tight 925 save percentage. He does have the numbers to fill out the categories for you if you're in that kind of league. And at 15%, is it 15? What do I got here? 15% on ESPN. To me, if you're definitely even, you have a goaltender slot and you're just looking for some insurance, like this is down the line a little bit on my list, but definitely Philip Gustafson starts to get more run out in this crease. I like what I've seen from this tall goalie. He can get it done at the NHL level steal, and he might just be, if you come past a big-time injury or you're invested in a Marc-Andre Fleury, this goalie could save your bacon down the stretch. Yeah, you know, obviously with the uncertainty with Mark Andre Fleury, he will be back with the team Tuesday or Wednesday. But he will. But what is he going to do? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Even if he does return, which he will Tuesday or Wednesday, we just don't know what the future, the next week or two weeks will look for. How many starts he'll get in the free? So Philip Gustafson is a great pick right there. I'm going back to a guy who I've talked about a little bit throughout the season, Connor Sheary of the Washington Capitals. You know, obviously. Obviously, Tom Wilson and Nicholas Backstrom are back with the Capitals, back in the lineup. But even mm. so, Connor Sheary remains on the top line playing with Backstrom and Ovechkin right now. He's got 11 goals, 28 points in 43 games. He's only rostered between 10 and 27% on both ESPN and Yahoo leagues. Mm. And, you know, this is a guy that I go back to every once in a while to pick up off the waiver wire because, again, playing yeah. with Ovechkin – and uh, playing with Ovechkin and Nicholas Backstrom, he's getting that time on the top line. He's mm-hmm. on the second power play unit. He gets some shorthanded opportunities as well. So another guy who I'd like to stream every once in a while. Yeah, that seems like the stream target for sure, because my one concern with that addition in the second half would be now that they do have all those bodies back in flux, what actually happens? You know, they have also Dylan Strom in the mix there. I like it for now, Steel. And like you said, keep your eye on him because he's that kind of guy who pops off for a big week and then fades away. So yeah. I like that as a more short-term fill. And very lastly and very quickly, before we get to big-time bets, because I'm fired up for my picks tonight, Steel. <laughs> Victor Arvidsson is a piece of one of the Love best secondary it. scoring uh, lines in the league with Philip Deneau. And it's usually, you know, there's a, a couple of different casts of characters. It was Trevor Moore in there for the most part. Now I follow is getting some look. I think Trevor Moore is actually hurt. Let me just check that. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of those guys on the yeah. IR for me on my fantasy There you team. go. So that's why. But Alex Iafalo is a solid fill-in. You know I like what's going on in the Kings top nine, top six especially. Kevin Fiala is starting to score some nice goals. To me, Victor Arvidsson is just one of those guys that, you know, hey, 50% owned. Is that what it is? 56% owned. He might be out there on the waiver wire for you. 11 goals, 20 assists, 10 penalty minutes, 96 shots. He's getting my over the 15 minutes for ice time a night mark. 
at almost 17. I don't know, Steele. There's a lot to like about this player, especially his consistency. 61 points, 30 goals. 61 points, 29 goals. 34 goals and 50 points. This guy has 31 points so far. Bank on another 30 in the second half, at least from Arvinson. And a nice little fill-in if you need some offensive punch. I think he's a nice second-half sleeper target. Yeah, he was one of those guys that I picked off the waiver wire very early on in the season. He's remained mm. on my roster ever since then. He's been fantastic. You know, he's missed mm. a couple of games here and there. But every time he's in the lineup, he does seem to produce some sort of stat, goal, assist, you know, hit, block, whatever it is. He yep. produces something for you. So definitely a guy I would go pick up off the waiver wire. Thank you. We're going to get over to big time bets very, very soon. But mm. this episode is also brought to you by our friends at Athletic Greens. The product they have right now, Flip and I use pretty much every single day. Ever since we started recording on this podcast, we've been using AG1 every single day and for specific purposes. For myself, I definitely wanted more en energy throughout the days. And I also hated taking pills and vitamins. And so I really wanted to see what all the hype was about with AG1. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. What exactly is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, and probiotics to help you start the day off right. This special, this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and even your aging. So much different things that it provides for you. Athletic Greens was created by the founder ex who experienced a ton of gut health issues and you know ended up on a very complicated supplemented routine to recover, which costed him over a hundred dollars a day, just way too expensive. AG1 is the right price for you. Mm. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. I take it myself in the morning. No need for million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget we are free and available on all podcast platforms, which also includes YouTube. So make sure you go hit the follow button, hit the subscribe. We appreciate all the love and all the support. And thank you so much again for tuning in for today's episode. Flip, let's mm. get over to big time bets where yes, the money is made. We I'll hope. throw it over to you. Where is your first pick going with Tuesday's big slate of games? This season has been a bit of an up and down battle steal. I'm hovering around the 500 mark. I'm below the 500 mark with my locks. I got to do better. And I am going back to what I have done so far this season that has worked, and I'm still kicking it off with an over-under. The San Jose-Arizona game might be one that you think, hey, I'm chucking a hand grenade in this. But I took yeah. a little look at this and peeled back some of the numbers as I'm trying to make some money in this new year. Maybe I'm a second-half sleeper for making some money here. <laughs> this San Jose team, eight of their last nine games have gone over the number. Seven of their last eight games on the road, well over the number, and four of their last five trips to the desert, you guessed it, over the number. And look, when I take a look at over under steel, you know, I say one jumps off the page to me. This is the one that jumped off the page to me. As an over, I'm going to hammer this over. Decent money right now at minus 102. Give me the over 6.5 in the San Jose, Arizona game. I know these two teams are maybe iffy. Why would you even want to pay attention to this game flip? But I think I like this spot for a nice high scoring game. Four, three is my final prediction. Well, I'm definitely going to sprinkle some on the over in this game, but that's actually where I went to for my first pick, hey. not the over, but I'm taking the coyotes on the money line at yeah, plus 118 against too. the San Jose sharks. Look, I really like, we've talked about the coyotes a frequent amount of times on the podcast, we like Karel Vimelka in the crease. Yep. We like Shane Gossipair and Jakob Trick Trickford and what they've done. Nick Schmaltz and Clayton Keller are getting it done on the top line. Mm. There's a lot to love about this Arizona Coyotes team. And again, if they can somehow land the number one overall pick, get Connor Bedard, or, you know, again, mm. try to entice free agents in the offseason to sign with them, this team could be really good in the next couple of years. Mm. I'm not saying mm. deep playoff mm. runs or anything, 
but they're going to yeah. be start heading up the, up the for standings it. for sure. I really like this Coyotes team right now, so take them on the money line at plus 118. Yeah, you and I, I missed out on the chance to talk Connor Bedard with you, so maybe you and I, I alluded to a goalie episode earlier in the week. I alluded to a Kraken episode earlier in the week. We might not get to that Kraken episode, but we're definitely going to talk goalies. Let's talk Connor Bedard again in the near future because he's worth it. I think he's going to change the outcome of whatever franchise he goes to steal. Yeah. So good takes on those players and that impact. If you don't mind, I'm going to go back to a team that you and I actually – which is somewhat surprising given how much we pumped up this team last season on the Blue Shirts podcast. The New York <laughs> Rangers are starting to play better hockey. And I understand you're close, you're, you know, your relativity to this Minnesota Wild team. The Minnesota Wild are a good club. And yes, yeah. this is maybe a tough game to go into because the Minnesota Wild are 9-4 and four in their last 13 games. The Rangers are 11-4 and four in their last 15. They're 5-1 and one in their last six games at home. And I just like this spot for the New York Rangers. Good money, minus 140. It could be Philip Gustafson. It could be Marc-Andre Fleury. You might not like this one, Steele. This is just more of a gut pick for me because the Rangers play so well at home. Rangers on the money line, minus 140 right now. May I regret it? Two tough losses for this uh, Minnesota Wild team is where I'm kind of going with this. Yeah. But... The New York Rangers, I think, pull this one out at home. Minus 140 on the money line. Yeah, you know, I don't hate the pick, but this is a game that I stayed away from just because, A, mm. I like I really like both of these teams. Obviously, the Minnesota Wild, yeah. but I like both these teams. We talk about them a lot on the podcast. And, you know, I did, you know, the other day, the Rangers had a very tough overtime loss to the New Jersey Devils. Devs, yeah. Um, the Rangers have let me down every single time I've picked them pretty much <laughs> this year. So I stayed away from this game, but I don't hate the pick. I'm Thank going you. over to a game, uh, the Avalanche. I'm taking the Avalanche on the money line, minus mm. 135 against mm. the Florida Panthers. Uh, mm. Again, we've talked about this Panthers at length. If they want any chance at making the postseason, they need to start winning games now, and, and it just hasn't happened. They had they had a chance to win against the Dallas Stars the other day. They lose 5-1. They get absolutely yeah. destroyed in the third period. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of putting any faith in, the, faith in this Panthers team. Spencer Knight and Sergei Bobrovsky have just not been good enough. So I'm putting a lot of my faith in this game and Alexander Gorgia, Nathan McKinnon, mm. Miko Ranton, and Kale McCarr, guys who have done it, who, who have got it done in the past. So I'm going Avalanche on the money line, minus 135. Yeah, Florida had a decent showing over the past couple of games, but I'm here for this take steal. You know, 4, 6, and 0 oh, in their last 10 still. Uh, again, to me, it's like I said the same thing with your feeling. I should have stayed away from that mini Rangers game. I'd be maybe staying away from this one personally. But, hey, that's why you go to your gut sometimes. The research is the research. The trends are the trends. But one team that has been getting it done and seriously impressing me, and I think I'm done talking about them as an under-the-radar piece because, in my opinion, the Winnipeg Jets have every single bit yeah. of a makeup to go on a run for a Stanley Cup. And say what you will about them and the best team in Canada – Right there with the Toronto Maple Leafs is the Winnipeg Jets as the best threat out of Canada for a cup this season. The Winnipeg Jets also did something very impressive over the last few games. They went on a West Coast road trip and won every single game, came back and beat the Tampa Bay Lightning and won a second game. They're on a five-game heater now, and things are starting to get a little impressive with this Winnipeg Jets team. On the opposite end, you have a Detroit team who's looking like they're ready to slide big time. Yeah. And I, you know, you know, as much as that hurts me because I did talk them about a lot in the off season jets money line minus 133 on the road, pretty good price steal. That's for sure. My lock of the night. This team is starting to fire on all cylinders. Look out for the Winnipeg jets in this second half. I like the pick a lot. I'm definitely going to sprinkle it into a parlay with a few of my Thanks. selections here as well. I'm going back to a team that you and I really like this season as well. More you so than me, but the Hurricanes, I'm taking the Hurricanes on the money go. line, minus 145 against the New yep. Jersey Devils. I think this yep. could be a very low-scoring game, but nonetheless, the Hurricanes have looked really good. Even though they've lost a couple of their last two or three games, I believe they have, uh, mm. even in those matchups, they've still looked good. They just, it just again, the result hasn't gone their way, but the Devils have been one of the teams sliding down a little bit the standings as well, you know, every now and again losing uh, a few games in a row, so... I'm going to stick with the, the better team in this situation. The Hurricanes on the money line, minus 145. That is my lock of the night. Flips, lock of the night. Let us know once again. 
gets money line minus 133. I'm liking both of these lock steel. And now that I'm speaking it out loud, this feels like a nice night for a couple of parlays here with all of our picks. Yeah. Maybe do a little mishmash of each. Maybe if you're feeling it, throw all six on there. Let's make this money. I'm going to do it with the fans out there. Tag us in your picks. Send us some screenshots. Tag us on TikTok now. Hit us on that new social media, baby, because we're out here feeding you fire content across all platforms, people, and it's all for the listeners. I hope you're getting this money starting with tonight. Hopefully we're getting the money to flip. I love all of our selections actually for Tuesday night. So I feel really confident and comfortable with all of our selections. A couple parlays would be very, mm -hmm. very nice, especially with the odds. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. But for your next listen, definitely go check out Locked On NHL Prospects, your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading all the way up to the NHL draft this summer. Plus, NHL draft rankings and top prospect comparisons for your favorite teams out there in the NHL locked on NHL prospects available on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with flip and I have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there and we, sh we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.